right, so let's let's keep on moving with this guy. We do have the camera working. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is walk through the process of building a, a basic editor tool. Uh, I mean, we're going to look at some, like, I would say intermediate stuff when it comes to editor tools for, for these types of components. Um, but I really like to do this for most of my components. And the reason why uh, is because it allows other people who may not be a programmer, right? They're a designer or they're an artist helping you out or something like that. Uh, use your components, right? It makes it really easy to understand. Instead of, you know, looking at your default Unity inspector editor that all components, all mono behaviors are given, basically. So let's jump over into Unity. All right, so now we're over here inside of Unity. Awesome. Uh, what we're going to do now is open up that other script. So inside of the editor folder that we created, let's go and um, open the top-down camera editor. And let's take a look at how we stub in an editor script really quick here. So first things first, like I was saying, I always like to put these under my namespace. So I call it IndiePixel.Cameras. All right. And any other camera basically that I create from here on out basically will be underneath the IndiePixel.Cameras namespace. So it basically protects everything. All right, so we're not going to need these methods for editor scripts uh, but I do want to make my regions first here so variables and then we'll have our main methods like so all right and whenever you're making a unity editor you have to include the unity editor namespace all right so that's where they keep all their code protected right so all their functions for editor stuff and then we have to tell this club this class that we want it to be a custom editor and we have to give it a type and now that type is going to be what we want to override um, the inspector for so in this case it's going to be IP top-down camera <coughs> alright and then finally we have to inherit or extend from editor boom okay then finally well not finally really we still have a long ways to go here <laughs> uh, we're gonna do the the target so we want to store a reference to our particular object that we're editing so I want to do the top-down camera not the editor so camera and I'm, I'm just gonna call that target camera like so cool okay and then because we extended from editor over here um, what we can do is we can override some methods that come with it so I'm gonna say public override and then we want on inspector GUI. You can see how many there are. And we'll leave the base in there for now because I don't think I'm going to do anything with the actual, excuse me, the actual inspector. So if we were to actually click on this guy here, I'm not going to do anything with this UI. I just want to add some UI to the scene view. So that's fine for now, which means you don't even need to do that. But I might actually later on go and add and customize that inspector. So this guy right here. But for now, what I'm going to do is just focus on the scene view GUI. So I'm going to say void on scene GUI. And this allows me to draw into that scene view. OK? Allows me to draw into here. So let's do a quick example just to, just to prove that. So we're going to say handles.draw solid disk. All right, so you notice that it needs a center. Now, That'll be um, our target. So I'm going to do target camera dot m target dot position. Okay, and we should also make sure that we should say if not target camera dot m target. We're not going to draw anything, so we'll do that return statement again. And again, you don't have to keep your brackets down here. We can always you can always get rid of the brackets, right? And just have that right below. Uh, but I, for readability reasons, I always like to do this. Hold on a second. Oh, I just need to let this thing compile. There you go. All right. So then, so m target camera dot m target dot position. Then we need a normal, and the normal basically means the direction that this disk is going to be pointing. So I'm just going to do vector three dot up because I want it pointing upwards, and we'll give it a radius of target camera dot uh, oh 
I forgot one step here. So, so excuse me, we need to back up one second here. So in our main methods, we also need the void on enable because I haven't even captured, basically, I haven't pulled in a reference of the object that we're editing. I just set up the, tar the target camera. So I need to say that the target camera, all right, so the target camera is equal to target, like so. And we get this target variable, right, from the editor namespace. So they provide that to us. And that holds the reference to what we're currently editing. So I need to also cast it to the proper type. So now I can do target camera dot m distance. Oh, and I made them, that's right, I made them all private. So this is, again, one of the reasons why you could probably use a serialized object, but I don't have time to go through all that. I'm, I am going to be making a whole series on, uh, let's just do this. I'm not going to do access those guys, so I'll leave that as that. But I'm going to do a vi video series on more advanced editor scripting, where we actually use serialized properties and serialized objects and stuff. I just wanted to show how to make a really quick. So we're going to do m distance like so. <clears throat> and the radius for this is, oh no, that was the radius, sorry. There we go. Cool. So now let's take a look at them and see what we get. Boom. We now have a disc in the scene. It's not very cool though, because it's hiding our tank or our target. So that's a good place to start. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to set it up so that basically we can pull a slider in 3D in this 3D view, in the scene view here, and it actually changes the, the distance value. And now the reason why I'm drawing a disc is because if you were to just look at the distance from the top, it's just the radius of a circle all the way around. So it'll tell us, you know, what the distance would be at any point in the angle. Um, okay, so let's go and um, I'm gonna store a reference. So I'm gonna say transform and the reason why I'm doing this is because I just don't want to type out target camera dot m target all the time, right? <clears throat> Transform, and I need this to be cam target equals. There you go. All right, so I'm just storing that there. Okay, so storing target reference, and it's just so I don't have to type that out all the time. Now I can just type cam target. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is keep the disk here, okay? Uh, but I do want to give this uh, a better color, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a wire disk here. So we're just going to switch this over to wire disk. And then I'm going to change the colors of the handles. So I'm going to say handles.color is equal to a new color. And we'll give it like a blue. I think that's what I had in the... I'll make it really light. Because I want this just to be very very transparent uh, solid disk okay and all that stuff is the same but I want to change this to a solid disk all right and you'll see what we what we just did here when this finish finishes compiling boom and that was a red disk I don't know I kind of like the red too I, obviously it's really up to you what color you choose <laughs> cool all right and Again, these are all, they all get drawn in order. So what I would do is actually put the solid disc underneath the wire disc. So the wire draws over the solid, but in order to do that, I need to say handles. What we could do is actually make this really fancy. Let's just increase the opacity to something like seven five, same color, or you can play around with the different colors. So it doesn't have to be white, right? It is red now, it's more solid. Maybe we change it to a green here. Yeah, you know. We could play around with colors all day. So let's move this on. Okay. So we could do just one and one to get like yellow. There we go. Not too bad. 
All right, so now what we want to do is build up that slider that allows us to change that distance, okay? So what I'm going to do is say handles dot uh, draw, draw, sorry, we're going to be doing the uh, scale slider, basically. So what I want to do is say target camera, okay, dot m distance equals a handles dot scale slider, okay? All right, so the scale that we want to adjust is this m distance. So this this parameter here is the target camera dot m distance because that's the value that we want to change, okay? And the position that we want this particular handle to start at, right, is the cam target. So the cam target dot position, all right, so the target of the camera, okay? The direction is going to be the cam target dot forward, but n negative. So I want it to come out the back of the, the target. Rotation, we don't want any rotation, so I'm just going to do a quaternion dot identity. All right, it's basically zero. And then the size is going to be that target camera dot m distance value. And then the snap is just going to be 1f, one unit. All right, so let's go see what that looks like. All right, so now we have this, this slider here that we can actually move, and it's going to change that radius for us. All right? Pretty cool. Very, very cool. All right, cool. So um, I want to change the color of that back to red. So what I'm going to do is actually use this color again. All right. And now what I want to do is uh, add a one of these sliders for the height. So let's do that. Um, and also, actually, let's do that first. And then I'm going to talk about a little bit of a bug that you might encounter here. So we want to do the M height instead. So M height. All right, so I'm just going to copy that and put that in place for all the values there. All right, and I'm going to change this one to blue. So this is going to be zero in red and one in blue. Oh, and we need to do vector three dot up for the direction. So vector three dot up, because I want it to represent the height. There we go. So now we have our height. And it might need a little bit more opacity for these guys. Uh, so let's do a 0.5 for these handles. It's cool that they have some transparency, but I want to I want to let the user be able to see these a little bit more. Cool. All right, so that'll adjust the height values of this thing. Perfect. Okay. Let's save. And so the thing that could happen, right? A user could be using this and changing something like the the distance. And you notice that we're starting to, to pop. It's because we're getting negative numbers. So I want to actually put a little bit of control on that. And really that's it's good practice to do that. So I'm going to say target camera dot m distance and and we're going to clamp it actually. So m distance is equal to a math f dot clamp. And it's going to be target camera dot m distance, right? And we want to clamp this between something like 5f and uh, float dot max value. Not float. Float dot max value. All right, so max value. You'll, and that's a big number, so you'll never actually, the user will never get there. But the main thing here is I want to make sure we don't go negative, right? So that's what that's doing. And that basically takes care of that little bug. All right, it's, just a, it's kind of a, a user interface or user work, workflow type of thing. You want to make the tools easy. So I actually want it to be a little bit bigger here. The last thing you want is your editor tools to throw off the user, the end user. And then they just think it's broken when it, it's probably not broken per se. It's just when it starts acting, acting wonky like that, everyone comes running to you saying like, oh my God, the tool's broken, you know? There we go. All right, so let's do the same for the height. So I'm just going to copy this. All right, so we're going to copy this because 
I don't need to type all this stuff over again. All right, so there we go. Perfect. So now we have an editor editor tool that allows you to edit this stuff. Um, like I said, in another video, I'll talk about serializing the values at runtime, right? So as you're changing this stuff, it's actually saving. But it requires that we get into some scriptable object stuff. And I really want to save that for a different video so I can pull all these guys down now. It allows me to adjust this in the scene. And then you can just come over here and you know, copy the component if you want. Then repaste it once you come out of play mode. All right, so the last thing I want to do is just kind of spruce this up a little bit. So let's actually add some labels because there's some more stuff I want to show here before I leave. Okay, so um, I want to actually make some labels here. So let's do some labels. Create labels and let me be a good programmer and I'm going to Give myself some notes. Um, slider handles to adjust camera properties. All right. <coughs> uh, draw distance circle or disk. How about that? Keep it consistent and. Make sure we have a target first. There we go. Okay. I know it's boring to watch, but it's good practice. Good practice. All right. So let's make some labels. So I'm going to say handles dot labels label, and we're going to put this at a position. So this position is going to be for the distance because I want to put a little label over the scale slider for the distance property. That way, like when someone moves it, they can see that, oh, this is for distance. You know, just helps again. So the position is going to be the cam target dot position uh, plus the negative cam target dot forward dot forward times the target cam dot m distance. All right. And the label is going to be. Uh, distance like so <laughs> cool ba boom all right so we don't need to do that there we go now we have a little label over it now it's cool and all but it's actually got I don't really like the the white that it set to so we're going to have to style that a little bit too so I'm going to show you guys how to style these but let's get the handle or the label for the height set up so let's do that. All right, so we're going to say handles.label plus vector3.up, right? Because we want this to be for the height. And we're going to call this the height. So we're going to use the height here. And we'll just say height. Cool. Cool. Now we have two labels. So it just helps out the end user, right? So now, now they know what they're, e they're editing. From here okay um, let's actually style these things so you'll notice that there's a couple overrides for or um, yeah overrides for these guys um, one of them takes a GUI style here so let's actually make a new GUI style and style our actual text right so I'm gonna say GUI style equal um, label style equals a new GUI style Boom. And we're going to say label style dot font size, sorry, is equal to something like 15 F. We're going to say label style dot normal dot text color is equal to color dot white. And then I want to center up the text too. So I'm going to say dot alignment is equal to text anchor. Text anchor, there we go. Middle center. Maybe we'll do upper center, how about that? Give us a little room. And then we just need to provide that label style to our label. Dope. Uh, 15 can't be converted to an int. Oh, sorry. There we go, much better. 
and you can always color them whatever you want again. Um, so then when we go to, um, and we could just pass this next, this label style into this next one, totally. Unless you wanted to change the, any of these properties, but we should do that just so we can see how you can do that. There we go. But maybe I want the height to be off to the right a little bit. So that's what I was saying. Let's say label style dot alignment now is equal to that text anchor um, middle right, like so. So that'll move it over a little bit. You know, again, just comes down to your personal preferences or whatever works well for you or your team, you know. And there we go. That basically is that. Now we have this all set up. You can see that we now have a way to select it. And when we select it, we get our editor tool. So we don't have to come all the way over here. Not that that's hard. <laughs> it just makes it easier. You know what I mean? So that is our editor tool. Pretty cool. And it's not too much. I like making these things. It's, it's really fun. All right, so I'll, I'll leave you guys there. And in the next video, I just want to wrap up this series and talk about making this a little bit more reusable um, and how to make a base class that we can use for all of our cameras. All right, thanks so much.